the Baofeng UV5R radio, the Ferrari of the handheld radio world, widely known by ham radio operators everywhere as the best handheld radio you can buy. The Baofeng UV5R is like the sexy redhead of the radio world. Maybe not the smartest redhead, maybe not the most reliable redhead, actually kind of like a dirty, sleazy redhead that stinks like cigarettes and sweat. But for $30, you take what you can get. Now, some people may be watching at this point saying to themselves, this guy is creepy, I'm frightened. If you think it's creepy now, keep watching. One of the most common questions that I get is what is squelch? And just as often, how do I set the squelch on a UV 5R radio? So today I'm going to explain to you what squelch is and how to set the squelch on a UV 5R handheld radio. And I'm going to do it in a way that does not bore you to death or waste your time like so many of those other YouTubers do. I respect you as a viewer, unlike many of those other YouTubers. As a matter of fact, you are my favorite viewer. And because of that, I'm not going to waste your time with a stupid intro with fancy graphics and music. I'm going to keep this video short and to the point because you are my favorite viewer, and I know how important you think your time is to you. Squelch on a radio is just a way of cutting out the static that you usually don't want to listen to. If you didn't have a squelch on your radio, you would hear nothing but this. That gets a little annoying. So the squelch is a way to blank out that static and that noise, the weak signals from people far away that maybe you can hear them talking, but you don't care what they're talking about, or you can barely hear them. It blanks it out so that you hear this. Beautiful silence. Unless your friend who's nearby is talking to you and has a stronger signal, the stronger signal will break through the squelch. It will be above that minimum level that you set and you'll hear your friend. That would sound like this. I don't have any friends. If you're an old timer, maybe you have a CB radio and most CB radios had squelch settings. Some called it a strength setting or other settings, but basically if you turn it down, you hear static, you turn it up, no static. And in the olden days, the way that you used the squelch was that you turned it down until you heard no noise and you turned it down and just until you heard the static and then you brought it up just a bit above the static. So that would set the the open level, the breakthrough level, just above the noisy, st this is static. This is the official, I think that's sign language for static. Oh, I'll get some comments about that. Static is down here. You set your squelch level just above it. So now anything stronger than the static, like your friends, will break through the squelch and you will hear them. That way you can enjoy your day using your radio without having to listen to all the static and instead only hearing your friends talking to you. The issue and the confusion comes about on the Baofeng UV5R and most modern radios of today. There is no squelch knob. You got a volume, you got an on and off, but there's no squelch like in the olden days of the tube CB radios that we used to use. So you have to do it in the programming. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. It is actually pretty simple to do once you get the hang of it. By the time we're done with this video, you'll be asking yourself, gosh, why wasn't I doing that before? It's easy. I'm a moron. You're not a moron. I would never call you a moron to your face. Now, first, I am required by FCC rules to point out that the UV5R is a ham radio. In order to operate a UV5R, in order to transmit on a UV5R, you must have a ham radio operator's license. Because it is a ham radio, it is only certified by the FCC to operate on ham bands, and ham frequencies. Transmitting on a UV5R outside of the ham bands and frequencies, for example, using a UV5R to transmit on FRS or GMRS frequencies, even if you have a GMRS license, would be a violation 
of the FCC rules. And you've probably read comments online about what will happen if you break those rules. Ham radio operators have left many comments on my old videos saying that if you break those rules, you'll go to jail, you'll get a 250,000 fine, you will be caught if you break those rules. It's all bullshit. If you wanna learn more about what will actually happen, what the penalties really are for breaking these rules, watch that video. That's an old video of mine, goes over everything. So basically it does violate the rules to transmit on a UV5R outside of ham bands or without a ham license. But be careful about believing all of the lies and misinformation spread by what we call the sad hams. So here is my UV5R the skanky redhead of the radio world. So let's see how to, oh, first, gotta take that off so I don't poke my eye out. Now you may notice that my radio is set at 462.7 megahertz, 462700 megahertz. That is a GMRS frequency, which as we just discussed, is not legal on to transmit. But as I explained to the sad ham earlier, I'm only monitoring. I can listen to whatever I want on my radio. So to all you sad hams watching, and we know you're watching, no need to get your little panties in a bunch. I'm not transmitting. So let's get into how to set the squelch on a UV5R. This works on any similar radios. This is actually a BFF8HP, which is the eight watt version of a UV5R. Inside, it's exactly the same. It just transmits with a little bit more power. You'll see other radios that look just like this. The programming is the same. Even radios from BTEC, I think it's just BTEC, the insides are all the same. So if the menus look the same or if the radio looks the same, the programming is the exact same. Even on the other more expensive radios like the Ocean KG805G or 905G, the steps are basically the same to go in and set the squelch or anything. So to set the squelch, first thing you need to do is go into the menu. Oh. One very important thing. If your radio is locked and you try to press any buttons, you're just gonna hear that. That means it's locked and you can see that it's locked. There's a little lock indicator right next to the battery. So we will unlock it by pressing and holding the blue lock unlock button for a couple of seconds. Unlock. The skanky redhead has now told me that it is unlocked. When you're done, you wanna lock it again. If you wanna lock it in, press and hold the lock button again. Lock. To set your squelch, you're gonna hit the menu button now that the radio is unlocked. Menu. And by default, it's gonna go right into the menu option because that is one of the most used and most important menu options. If you were in the menus before, shut up you stupid bitch. Mine is set to automatically lock, so she just locked herself back up. If you were in another menu, menu. previously, it might show something else. So to get to the squelch menu item, you just use the up and down arrows until you find the one that says SQL, or you can just hit the shortcut key, that little blue CSQL there, zero, will take you to the squelch menu. Once you have that item selected, you press menu again, and you'll see the little cursor went down below, which means now you can edit that line by using the up and down arrow keys. So I'm gonna change my squelch from number three. Three is a very low setting, which means I'm gonna hear a lot of static and noise. I'm gonna turn it all the way up to nine. To save it, I'm then gonna hit menu again, Confirm. and then I'm gonna hit exit or just wait, but I'm gonna hit exit. If I'm not sure that it's saved, because sometimes I think I save it and I didn't actually save it, I'll go right back in. Hit menu, menu. and I can see now that squelch is at nine. If I didn't actually save it, just go right back in by hitting menu again, up, down, make sure it's at nine, make sure the little cursor is there, meaning I'm still editing. Confirm and she confirmed it. I wasn't paying attention before. She does confirm it. You skinky redheaded bitch. So that's it. You've set the squelch level on your UV5R. Congratulations. There's only one problem. The squelch on a UV5R is shit. The squelch on these radios does not work very well. Some say it doesn't work at all. It does work 
If it didn't work at all, you'd be hearing nothing but So it does work, but when certain people complain, certain people saying, those cheap Chinese junk radios, the squelch doesn't even work. Obviously it works, but it doesn't work very well. It's not very sensitive between the lowest setting and the highest setting. And when you compare a better quality radio, for example, any of the ocean radios, which are better quality, they're designed differently. When you compare, if you set the two radios side by side, you will hear noise and static coming out of a UV5R. You won't hear it coming out of the better radio because the circuitry is better and the circuitry on the better radio detects the noise level. It does something, it's better. Whether or not you notice a difference or whether or not it seems like to you that the squelch doesn't work at all really depends on the amount and type of spurious RF emissions in your neighborhood. But luckily, there is sort of a fix for that as well. If you're using the Chirp software, there are settings in Chirp that you can put in that you cannot put in directly on the radio. You can only do it through the Chirp software that will allow you to improve and in, uh, adjust and approve the squelch sensitivity a little bit better. Now to do this, you will need to download the Chirp software. It's free, it's safe. I'll put a link below. Very easy to use. I've made some videos on how to use it, a million videos online on how to use it. Easy and safe, but you will need a cable and the cable will plug into the side of the radio. See those little holes there? You just stick it in the hole. Now you can get these cables on Amazon and other places for eight or nine dollars. I've seen more complaints about those cheap cables not working than anything else ever. I bought a few of these of the cheap ones from Amazon and half of them didn't work. So I learned the hard way to use the better, more expensive $14 cable. This is an ocean. I got it from buy2wayradios.com. Affiliate link below. It's only a couple of dollars more than the cheapo ones. And so far, this has always worked. You don't have to worry about installing drivers or anything. It works with a Windows computer or Mac. And if it doesn't work or there's a problem, you can actually call a human being on the telephone that speaks English in the United States and they will take care of you. So you connect your radio to the cable, the cable to your computer. You load up the Chirp software. And when you load it up, you'll have to learn where the screens are. It's pretty simple. You'll find a tab called Service Settings. And in there, on that screen, You'll see a whole bunch of different numbers and entering different values in there might help the squelch work better. I've done this on six or seven of my radios and I didn't notice any difference at all. The squelch still sucked, but a lot of people swear that it helps a lot. So whether or not it works for you depends again on the spurious RF emissions in your neighborhood. Miklor.com, M-I-K-L-O-R, I'll put a link below, has a great write-up on how to do this in Chirp, on what the settings mean. He explains it way better than I ever could. I told you this would be easy. I told you this would be quick. I think I have fulfilled my commitment to you. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Dickhead questions will be pinned to the top for everybody to enjoy and laugh at. So think twice before you type your question. I don't mean a question a technical question. There's no stupid questions. There are stupid questions, but I don't mean that kind of question. I mean, if you're going to be a dickhead, think twice. Thank you for watching. And for an even more in-depth review,